This is one of the most effective, low-budget, ground-launch, small-diameter bomb in service today due to its cost and accuracy. Let's look at the interior of this missile and the re-engineered technology behind it that helps it glide without a rocket to almost 80 to 90 miles or 130 to 140 kilometers, all in the videos ahead. We will also look in step-by-step -step format how this missile works from a high Mars as well as the multiple rocket launcher system. And more importantly, the pros and cons of this missile to have an unbiased review. Enough said, let's get straight to the video. This is a GLSDB or ground launched small diameter bomb, developed by both the American company Boeing in collaboration with Saab, a company from Sweden. Basically, they attached the M26 rocket to this existing GBU-39 and re-engineered the whole GPS and laser guidance kit to glide to its target. The missile has a length of 3.91 meters or 12.8 feet, with a diameter of 241.3 millimeters or 9.5 inches. It has an overall weight of 272.1 kilograms or 600 pound. What is the big deal with this missile? The M26 rocket motor is relatively abundant, and this GBU-39 costs about $40,000 a piece. While this M31 GMLRS missile costs $110,000 a piece. And most importantly, the range of the GLSDB is around 81 miles or 130 kilometers, which is double the range of this M31 missiles that has a range of only 43.5 miles or 70 kilometer which was also used by both HIMARS and this multiple launch rocket system as animated in our recent video. Besides its low cost, it has the ability to fire six missile all at once. And most importantly, it can hit any angle giving it a strike capability over the conventional artillery guns. This include the reverse slopes of any mountains, just like the animation shown here. Its 360 degree gives it an edge as it could engage the enemy from every angle. This helps the Marines to engage the enemy in battle situation even if they are flanked from the right, left, front, and back. Before we move into the step-by-step -step process of how this works, let's examine the parts of the missile in detail. This is the M26 motor, which was used from the older unguided rocket of the US military and available in abundance. Moving to the midsection is the interstate adapter. And at the top is the GBU or guided bomb unit. These are the glide wings and open up just like this. Commanding a wingspan of just 1.6 meters or 5.2 feet. Let's look closely at the parts of the GBU-39. This is the steel penetrating casing or cable cover. And inside it is this 113 kilograms or 250 pound unguided bomb. They literally took this bomb used by the Air Force and re-engineered it to fit inside this casing. This is the arming generator or unit cover. Moving back is the wing assembly unit. Inside is the fuse well with insensitive munition features. At the back is the heavily engineered anti-jamming GPS guidance kit. Also a reminder this missile uses both GPS and laser guidance. Just below is the guidance unit housing. This bomb also has a small mission computer as shown here. Just closer to it is the thermal battery unit. And the last part is the tail unit that helps stabilize the missile. Let us look at how this works. Step number one. High Mars or MLRS truck receives data from higher commands for the designated target. Step number two. The High Mars truck will launch the missile. Step number three. After traveling to a desirable altitude, the GBU-39 small diameter bomb would head towards the target just like it would if it were dropped from a strike aircraft like the American F-16 or the Sav Griffin. Step number four. The GBU-39 will then glide through terrain or behind the cover of mountains using the anti-jimming GPS or it could be even laser guided to its target. Step five. In high threat circumstances, HIMARS uses a shoot and scoot capability to increase crew and platform survivability. HIMARS' ability to deploy, shoot, move, and reload in a few minutes significantly hinders an enemy's ability to find and target HIMARS. Step 6. The HIMARS will then conduct reload operations with the use of a reload arm assembly to stack up six rockets of different caliber. 
Let's look at a simulated battlefield environment of how it might work. When there is an invading enemy, the command and control station observes and spots the convoy on their screen. This truck-based rocket launcher will open the roof and fire the desired number of missiles towards its target. After reaching a suitable altitude, the GBU-39 will separate and pop out its wing. It will glide towards its multiple target, either through GPS or laser guided by a recon team. Here you can see in this animation, the strategy is to destroy the main point of entry to stop the convoy, and then proceeds from the back to the front in the attack. Again, this video would not be complete without the pros and cons. This small diameter bomb could be produced in large numbers owing to the small cost of just $40,000. Compared to its predecessor, it cost around $110,000. Although this is not a suitable comparison, but the Javelin missile cost around $240,000. As the precision of the bomb uses DPS guidance to achieve high accuracy, this reduces the likelihood of collateral damage. The bomb is lighter than traditional bombs, allowing the Marines to carry more ordnance or to extend their range during flight. Let's talk about the cons of this missile. As the name suggests small diameter bomb, it has limited blast radius, the smaller size of the bomb reduces its effectiveness against heavily fortified targets. Although this is a highly engineered anti-jamming GPS, and laser-targeted missile, its dependence on it could also be a drawback. We believed it could be jammed or degraded in certain environments. But keeping in mind, these are only speculations and requires a broader study to understand it. As you guys know, a lot of work goes into the making of every video in 3D Blender. We then have to render the videos in 4K resolution and compose them in After Effects for treating the raw files and graphics. Export it from After Effects as MOV in Apple ProRes. Then it goes into the editing table that is Premiere Pro to sync the sound with the exact text and specs of the video. Here goes the thumbnail, although it looks simple, but as you can see the amount of layers that goes into the making of just this simple posters, and the many more to come. We make these with pure love to understand the basic engineering behind every part. So a humble request to please like and subscribe to help us produce more longer format videos just like these.